How to upgrade the SSD in your Lenovo Yoga. I purchased the Lenovo Yoga 13. It's great. It's a hybrid Windows 8 Ultrabook touchscreen slate convertible thing. There's a review on it. On, I'll link to it somewhere over here. However, by default, it comes with a 128 gig SSD, which isn't really big enough. So I wanted to upgrade to a bigger one. Now, the Yoga uses one of the 1.8 inch SSDs, and those are awfully small, and you can't get the really large size SSDs in that. You're limited to 256. However, the Yoga has spots for two SSDs, but they're a little tricky to get to. So I'm gonna keep the original 128, and I'm gonna to upgrade to a second 256, and probably when the 512s come out, then I'll upgrade again, and I'll replace the 128 with the 512. But, there's a couple of interesting things to note. One, in order to get this off, you're going to have to use a Torx on the back to do all of the screws, and you're going to, have to pop off the keyboard and remove any of the screws that go through the metal faceplate. You don't have to remove all of the screws that are available there, but most of them. Then there's a couple of catches that will in fact hold it in place. But an interesting thing is that in, to aid in putting this together, there's strong magnets at the corners, and that's what holds them in. And the second SSD location is located over here, and I'll do a zoom in here in just a second so you can see it. Okay, we're now zoomed in, and as you can see, there's cables that keep this part attached, and rather than detach them, I'm just going to move the back most of the way out of the way. Then the SSD just slides into place, clips in, and then it goes down. And we're going to use one of the screws that we stole from taking apart the the case and use it to put it back in. And rather than try and shoot this in a nice view of the camera, I'm just going to tell you that the screw goes there and then you're done. That's all there is to it. I'm using just an optical screwdriver to do the screws, but you have to do all of the ones that go through this bit of metal. And you don't really need to cinch them down super tight. Um, from the factory they come pretty tight, but they're just being paranoid. Um, and because I stole one of the screws from the set to hold the SSD, I'm going to leave one. I'm going to have one screw missing, and I've kind of decided that it's going to be this screw over here that doesn't look like it does anything. And we'll hope I'm not sad about that decision later. And the last step is re-putting the keyboard cable back in place. Just one more time. So on the blue part of the ribbon cable, there's two little tabs, one on each side. I use the tip of the screwdriver to push that into the receiver, and then this black bit folds down, and you apply a little bit of pressure, and it'll lock into place. So that's how you know the keyboard's back in place. And then, over here are these little clips, and you need to make sure that all the clips catch when you put the, the keyboard back in place. And if you did it right, Everything's happy and installed. Okay, so when you go into your control panel and then select computer management and then click on disk management over here, it'll pop up and it'll say you must initialize this disk before the logical disk manager can access it. And you can choose whether you'd like this to be a master boot record or a GPT. And probably GPT is going to work for you because it's unlikely you're ever going to install this particular device in anything other than this um, laptop. So you probably don't need it to be backwards compatible with previous versions of Windows. But you may want to choose MBR if you're dual booting to Linux or something like that. But I'm going to choose GPT. 
Now I have a 238 gig unallocated partition, which I can just say I'd like a new simple volume, and I can say how big I'd like it to be, and I'm actually going to leave four gigs off because I like to have four gigs available for other things. So I'm going to change that to a zero. Poof. And it'll assign it a drive letter, or we could mount it in an empty folder. Um, you may want to make this your documents folder or whatever, but for now, I'm just going to assign it to the drive letter E. And NTFS is fine. XFAT is good if you're going to dual boot this into Linux or something along those lines. Uh, the default allocation size should be fine unless you're working with very large files or very small files. Um, and quick format should be fine. And I actually like this enable file and folder compression. It breaks compatibility with Linux, but since you only get 256 gigs and a lot of things compress pretty well, and because this is such a fast drive because it works off of you know no moving parts, the compression actually works very well. Now it puts a little bit of CPU load on when you're accessing files, but for the most part you're going to store a lot more stuff um, as long as those things are not pictures or video that don't compress very well. If it's uncompressed video, you get quite a bit of compression. If it's text files, databases, those kinds of things, the folder compression can add up pretty quickly. And then we just say finish, and poof, it is now formatting the drive, and shortly it will show up as being drive E, and we're off to the races. Um, in order to get this to show up the first time, I did have to hit the F2 at boot to go into the setup. I didn't have to change anything in the setup, but I did in fact have to go in. That's because the Intel rapid boot sometimes messes with the hardware detection and assumes, hey, we don't need to detect what hardware you have because we know this is a fixed device and the hardware is not going to change. Well, this time the hardware did change, and so you needed to go into the BIOS just to let it know the hardware's changed. And we're done, it is formatted, and we have a new volume E that I didn't give a name, it's apparently just named new volume. But there you go. We now have a laptop that has 256 gigs as a secondary drive, 128 gigs as the primary drive, and life's happy. And when the 512 comes out, I'll upgrade the primary to 512.